Please, for the love of God, add a post-process volume to all your scenes in Unreal Engine moving forward. All right, if you go to the quickly add to project menu in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna go to visual effects and post-process volume. You get a cube in your scene, but it's actually not a cube. It's like an adjustment layer in After Effects. If I go to my location and zero it out to world origin, the first thing I do every single time is I type in UNB. You must do this, otherwise it won't work. You tick this on. And when you tick it on, it's basically gonna affect the entire scene. So the cube doesn't really mean anything, but it's just there for visual reference. So with the post-process volume here, we basically want to demonstrate how this works. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and fly inside the cube. Nothing's happening. Now, the reason why I recommend using a post-process volume is because we want to manipulate our lighting without any weird randomness. So if I go to my exposure tab, turn on my metering mode, and then I turn on my min and max, if if I go ahead and look outside, hey look, it, the, the lighting changed. Versus if I look inside, hey look, it's getting brighter. We don't want that because if you're trying to use a camera and you're using auto settings, it's going to make your shot change in brightness all the time. I'm gonna use my own camera as an example. If I turn off my light over here, it's going to auto correct the image to try and make my face well lit as best it can. But if I set this to manual, now I'm at 400 ISO, I would actually have to crank this manually. But if I turn on my light, the camera is gonna look super blown out and bright and we don't like that. So instead, we go down to auto ISO because sometimes my monitor brightness lights my face more than I want it to. So in the same way, the same demonstration, this post-process volume here is something you must add to your scenes to help make sure that we can keep lighting consistent in Unreal across all of our shots that we make for film, VFX, etc. So. What you do with the post-process volume is you go to your metering mode, set this either to manual or keep it at auto exposure basic and you set the min and max to one. And once it's at one, I can fly around my scene and there's gonna be no visual changes in lighting to my shot as I fly around the scene. Now, I could go to my exposure compensation and increase this and this exposure compensation operates like a regular camera as in if I go to my exposure compensation here, I'm just gonna crank it and it should be cranking a little more, but I don't want that. Let's go ahead and bring it down. Same thing, the camera is doing the auto exposure, but I just wanna keep it right there. So same thing in Unreal, we have our exposure compensation. So it'll adjust and expose relative to our lights, or we could also just go into our light and increase the brightness. And we can see here that no matter where we fly, the lighting is not going to change. So that's important for Unreal if you're trying to make sure that your lighting stays consistent. Alternatively, you can go into your post-process volume, set this to manual, and it's gonna get very, very dark, and then you set your exposure compensation. I think it's like 9.5 is the default to make it look like the, the traditional values of what we would typically see with an unreal light. So however you light your scene is whatever you need your scene to be, get your art director or whatever, make sure it looks good, but start with a post-process volume to light it consistently. I'm gonna set this back to auto exposure histogram. It's gonna get very bright and then set this to one. These are the settings I use. Auto exposure histogram, exposure compensation one, one and one. I recommend doing it this way, but again, however you need to work by all means. Post-process volume also does some other cool things such as uh, you can add chromatic aberration and uh, get a, a cool look to your scene, but I typically don't do any of this stuff. I will do it in post. You can go ahead and add a vignette and make it look a little bit more cinematic. I don't use these in engine. Most of the time I'll do it in After Effects or DaVinci Resolve. But what I do use the post-process volume is controlling my global illumination and my reflection. So if I go ahead and just turn all this stuff on, it's on by default if you're using the film broadcast blank template, but I just make sure I turn it on just to be sure that it's on and it's working great. Now the last thing I want to show you is we're going to go ahead and fly inside this little environment and if I uh, position my camera to be looking at the window we can see that it's really dark in some spots where light is not actually affecting and then it's obviously the window is giving us 
a look somewhere. Now, the post-process volume is not going to be the direct contributor direct contributor to your global illumination and lighting. If I go into my directional light right here and I scroll all the way up to indirect lighting intensity, I can crank this up and we can see that it's getting a little bit brighter in the areas that's not directly affected by my sunlight. So if I set this to like 50, now we're getting a lot of global illumination with only just this one light. And I can go ahead and turn off my rectangular light that's on the inside. And uh, now we have what is perceived as global illumination. We're faking light in the shadow areas of our image. Now, if I didn't, if I wanted this to look a little bit more realistic, if you were exposing for the window on the outside, unless you have like a, a real film set, this would be super blown out. So what a more realistic camera would look like is if I would just set this back to zero. This is probably more correct. And then if I wanted to expose correctly as a, the way a real camera would function, I would add lights like on a film set and just like bring this guy up, maybe increase the attenuation radius, increase the intensity and do my best to compensate for that. And that will end up looking like more realistic. But again, whatever your look needs to be, that's how I would uh, design the shot with lights in my scene. But you can fake it with your indirect lighting intensity if you need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this rectangular light that we just made because if you wanted to expose as in like a real camera the inside of the room then you would typically go into your camera and increase your exposure compensation until the inside is now correctly exposed, but now the window's blown out. So again, do you add lights? Do you do this in your post-process volume, etc.? It's really up to you on what your shot needs to be as far as a lighting standpoint. Now, the last thing I do need to show you is that if we go into our hamburger lines in the top left-hand corner of our viewport, we go to create camera actor here, and we go ahead and go to our perspective and look through our camera. We're now looking through our camera. Let's set this to like a 24 millimeter lens just to, uh, uh, make it look a little, uh, we'll go back to 16. So, hey look, it's the inside of our room. Now, if you scroll all the way down in your camera, with my camera selected, there is a post-process menu, and we basically have all the same properties of the post-process volume in the camera. So if you're looking through this camera, let's say hypothetically with this Cine camera actor here, I go to my lens exposure and I turn all this stuff on. When we're looking through this camera, it will overwrite your post-process volume settings. So I'll set this back to one and one. And now our exposure is exposing for the window on the outside. But if I leave the camera, it's going to get super bright because we're exposing for the inside. So Post-process volumes will help you manage your lighting in Unreal. I wanted to make this tutorial because I realize a lot of people are struggling with lighting and this is actually, a, the post-process volume will help you maintain some level of consistency across all of your shots. So, I'll leave it there. I hope this tip was useful. I hope this tip was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip as always one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Bye.